All right, so at this time, I have the pleasure and the honor of introducing to some and presenting to others our very own, the beautiful, the wonderful, illustrious, <laughs> First Lady District Missionary Gwendolyn Ralph. She will be bringing our word at this time. Thank you and God bless you, amen. I do honor God on this morning to his sweet son Jesus, to the precious gift of the Holy Ghost who abides down on my inside. To each of you um, in the presence of the Lord, I honor my husband on today who is the founder, the preacher, teacher, reacher, as our, our brother would say, amen. We give glory to God for him, to our elders, to Sister Wesleyana, to the body of Christ. I thank God for his many, many blessings that he's bestowed upon me and my family. I thank God for a new year, a new opportunity to just give him glory, give him praise. And as we used to say in the world, go for broke in the Lord. Amen. I'm not going for broke nowhere else, but I'm going for broke in the Lord. Amen. God has been truly good to us. He took us over the dangerous highways and um, over into Dallas for the week and brought us back safely. And you know what? The last few years, he blessed us to just not even be touched. I know some were, but we weren't touched with COVID in our personal home. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thanking God for just his covering. I thank God for all that he is to me and my family. I'm going to just... Um, I should uh, um, bow your heads with me. You don't have to stand, but bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day and for this hour. We thank you for your many blessings that you bestowed upon us. We thank you for your awesomeness, O oh God. You are El Shaddai. You're more than enough. And we thank you on this morning. O oh God, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God, amen. For those of you who um, have just been really toiling and going through for the last two to three years, you're wondering what direction you should be going in, where you should be going, and what you should be doing. I just um, want to, I just came by, you know, just to encourage some of you today, especially those of you who are worried. I know some people are like, I'm not worried, but when we get into the lesson on today, we'll understand you know, where I'm going, but we don't need to be worried about being weary because guess what? Yahweh is not weary. Yahweh is Jehovah God. He's not weary. He doesn't slumber, neither does he sleep. He's God all by himself. And as they told me when I came into this church, he don't need our help. He gives us an opportunity. He gives us the privilege to serve him. But we have to get into our hearts and minds and understand it's a privilege that we serve him. He can, he, he can have the very rocks crying out for him, but he said, if you don't praise him, if you don't do your part, the rocks will cry out for you. And I don't know about you all, I'm going for broke because I don't want any rocks and anybody else crying out for me because he's that kind of God. I'm going to go from um, the book of Isaiah, verse, um, chapter 40, verse 27 through 31. And this is the um, English standard version that I'm reading. Verse 27 says to Jake, uh, it says, why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Verse 28, have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall, be exhaust, shall fall exhausted. But they that wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So this question was asked to the Israelites. Why do you think he, he, why do you think he asked that question? Why do you think we have to ask ourselves, 
Why do we think the way we think? So often, we get concerned about things that maybe we really don't need to be concerned about, especially as believers. He told us to have faith and trust in him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And lean not, thank you my brother, to our own understanding. Why do we get into these battles in our mind and wanting to question God? It's okay because God, there was some questioning going on in the book of Job and some of the other scriptures that were put out there for our learning and our remembrance, our recollection. Have you ever thought about the Lord not being concerned about you and your concerns? Have you ever thought about that? Sometimes we think about, oh, God ain't worried about that. God is not worried about this. But what if I told you that he's worried about everything and not worried, but he's concerned about everything you're concerned about? Yeah. Things that you're concerned about, he's concerned about. Yeah. Do you think that the Lord has no idea about what you are thinking and are doing or what you're going through? Do you really think that? Sometimes I know that we get worried, we get burdened, we become, you know, just tired and exhausted, even as the scripture said, even as the young men said, but as the eagle-eyed prophets that spoke to the Israelites, I'm gonna ask you today, have you not known? Have you not heard? Have you ever observed or searched for answers in the scriptures? Has anyone ever explained to you about who Yahweh really is? Some say he's a figment of our imagination. If you listen to the world, they'll tell you. You know what, that's just yeah, you know, some made up stuff. But I assure you he's not. Some say he's the man upstairs. To me that reduces him to us. We've gotta understand that he's greater than anything and anyone that we can ever you know, even compare him to. May I introduce you, some of you all may know him. I don't know that we know him on the level that we could know him. And I don't even know if we know him on the level that we think we know him. Because he's such a, an amazing God. He's such an awesome and, you know, I can't even come up with the words to explain how, you know, great he is. I'm thinking about from one drop of fluid and from an egg, he creates a human being. And in that, everything that we need when we come out of the womb, we already have in our existence. We just begin to develop and to form. But that's not my message. I'm just, I'm just kind of letting you know how great a God that we really serve. Yeah. Yahweh, he is the Lord everlasting. He is the everlasting God. There is no end to this God. He's eternal. He's the same God that you see in the book of Genesis who before anything existed, he caused the light to exist. He created the stars and hung the moon in place. Have you ever thought about how many stars are in the heavens? To the young people who are studying science and biology, pay attention. Think about the billions of stars that are in the, in the universe. He put those in place. And they never stopped fulfilling their purpose. Unlike man, sometimes we slip over here and we slip over there because of our weariness. But he's not weary, remember that. He is, Yahweh is eternal. Whatever he does is eternal. If he began a good work in you, that's eternal. Just keep that in mind. Even if you decide to pull away or draw back or do whatever it is that you think you're big enough to do, he's eternal in all of that. He's the same God who created purpose in you, and that purpose will, will have an eternal impact. Amen. He's the, like I said before, he's the eternal, I mean, he's the creator of the entire universe. Right. He's that same God that stepped out of nowhere and said, let there be light. According to Psalm 104 and five, he established the earth on her foundations. Think about that, it's a solid foundation. The earth is on its axis and it never stopped going in the right, wrong direction. It never starts, it's always going in the right direction. It's like it's set on an axis as the, um, the, the scientific thing says, and it just continues to evolve. Have you ever seen the earth just stop and try to go backwards and do what it wants to do? He set that thing in motion 
and it's never stopped serving its purpose. He established the earth on her foundation so that it will not be moved forever and ever. So I know that for the young people especially, and me, I, I just thought it was really something when they came out with the movie Black Panther, you know, we all got into it, and even just here recently, you know, the new version of the Black Panther where the women are, are you know, coming forth and all of this stuff. But I know that these superheroes are really amazing. But let me explain to you all, Yahweh is the real deal. He's the real superhero. If you ever want to see a new superhero, get to know Yahweh, the God of the Bible, as the pastor would say, not just some figment of somebody else's imagination, the God who brought us through, the God who is yet taking us through every storm, every test, everything that we've been through, especially as a people. We have not been able, they have not been able to dis, um, distinguish, extinguish us. He's the same God that John saw high and lifted up in the book of Revelation. He was in the temple. He said his train filled the temple, right? He's the one who will be the final judge. He's also the God from whom John heard uh, say that he will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these are gone forever. That's in the book of Revelation 21 and 4. He's that God. Let me tell you how powerful he is. He's an omnipotent God, and meaning he's got all the power. He's got all the power. Scripture tells us that he doesn't slumber nor sleep. When we're tired and weary, when we're going through what we're going through, God is not sleeping on you. Even when he's not talking to you as you think he should. You know, I know some of you all, he speaks to you every day, all day, through, you know, 365 days a year, 366 through the leap year. But understand this, he, whether he's speaking to you or whether he's silent, he's, yet not, he's not slumbering nor sleeping. The scripture tells us that he doesn't do that. He does not faint or grow weary. So to faint is to be weak or, uh, weak or dizzy, close to losing consciousness. He's not that kind of God. Weary, feeling or showing tiredness especially as a result of excessive exertion or lack of sleep. He is never faint or weary with having the countless wants of his people before him to attend to. So just think about it. All of the billions of people in the earth. I believe they said it's about 330 million people in uh, the United States. So just suppose, I'm not even going to give us a high number, but suppose 10% of that 330 million people are claimed to be God-fearing, claimed to love God and he loves them. So that would give us about 30 million people just in the United States who are talking to God, right? So if we have about 30 million people talking to God at the same time, has he ever answered your prayer? Has he ever answered your prayer? You then are one in, a, in this equation, 30 million people in whom he's answered prayer for, right? So if you're one in 30 million people, can you imagine, I mean, if he was the man upstairs as some claim, don't you think he would be bombarded with that many people talking to him at one time? Don't you think he would be like some of us and grow weary, shut up? I'm tired of y'all talking to me. But the word of God says, neither is he weary, nor is he fainting. Ha, thank you, Jesus. Think about that. He don't care how many times you come to him. Sister Jennifer, just don't, be, don't worry about him getting weary, okay? He ain't going to get worried. It doesn't even matter whether we get weary, because the scripture is going to tell us a little bit about that even. He's not weary, nor is he going to be, nor is he going to faint. Praise God. His understanding is unsearchable. Let's dissect that for a few seconds. The scripture tells us his ways are not our ways. So why do we always try to put God in a box? Why are we always trying to make it seem like he's just like we are? His ways are as, as far as the heavens are from the earth. He said that the east is from the west. Now, I'm not, I'm not 
you know, this physics genius or anybody like that. I didn't even do well in physics when I was in college. I, I barely probably made a D to get out of physics, but I do know this. When you're talking about, can you measure the east from the west? Can you think about how far the east is from the west? Just coming from the west coast to the east coast, not all around the world, but from the west coast to the east coast, it's like two or three, 4,000 miles in, in some instances, right? It's quite a few thousand miles. Think about the depth of that. But as far as that is, he said that our ways are just that far away. So let's not put God in a box. Let's not relegate God to mankind. He said God is a spirit. And they that worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. So not our spirit. We've got to take on the spirit of Christ. We have to take on his spirit. If we don't have his spirit, he said we're none of his. So I don't care how you shake, rattle, and roll. You could, you could make the whole lights quake up in here. But it doesn't matter because if that's not him, when you walk out the door, you're going to see a different, different story. So have you ever looked at the stars, like I said, in the sky at night? Pastor relays sometimes to you all when we were in on a cruise and how dark it is when you're on that cruise ship and you're looking up at the stars at night. It's nothing but blackness, but the stars are yet gazing at you. The stars are in their place. They're doing what they're supposed to do. We can get wrapped up in searching and never get to the end because he's eternal. He, we serve an eternal God. Not only does he not faint or grow weary, but he gives power to them who do faint. So when you get tired, when you don't want to go anymore, when you say, I, I, I don't know what the purpose is or what the use is, when you get to that point, he has something for you. He says, I give power to the faint. I give power when you get a little weary. I, get I give you power when those children don't want to act right. I give you power when, he, when, when it just don't seem like they're acting right on your job. I give you power. And that power doesn't require you to even say a word. All you have to do is hold your peace. When you hold your peace, he said, I'll fight your battle. He'll fight your battle for you. But you have to get into a place and a posture where you allow your spirit to come under subjection. When you allow your spirit to come under subjection and to take on the spirit of Christ. I know some of you all said, no, you know what? And I, I think I said this to somebody not long ago, and so I'm guilty of it. Listen, I told him, listen. I'm, yeah, I know you all think I'm this sophisticated lady that, you know, has it together all the time. But I grew up in South Phoenix. And as one of the preachers told us when we were in the conference last week, he said, I have the Holy Ghost, but my Holy Ghost may have a little hood in me. <laughs> However, we can't even take on that posture to allow that hood to come out of us. Because the hood will want to come out. But we even have to bring that under subjection. Even though we may grow tired, Jehovah Jireh, you all know the one who says he's my provider? He's more than a provider of, of as our pastor would say, wigs, coats, hats, and shoes. He's more than a provider of jobs. He said, I'll give you power over all unclean spirits. That means that unclean, unclean spirit in you. We can't cast no devil out if, we, if we, we got him riding up in us. We've got to understand the position and the power that we have to operate in. He's calling us to a higher place, saints of God. He's calling us to a place where people will understand if we understood our relationship with God and how important it is when we walk with him. How much of a greater witness we can be when we have that prayer life that uh, pastor's been trying to teach us about through Mother Dabney's book. It's a, a, that it has a lot to do with us bringing ourselves under subjection when we have a relationship with him. 
we can't have a relationship with everything and everybody and not have that relationship with him. Just doesn't work. He, but he gives power to the faint, meaning those who are staying before him, those who are saying, God, I need thee. Oh, how I need thee. Every hour of the day, I need you. Oh, bless me now, God. My, my sister, my brother needs you. As we intercede early in the morning, 5 a.m., we're interceding for the people of God. We're continuing. I said, Lord, we need you to show yourself strong because in the mornings when we're praying, we get this long list of prayer requests. Every morning, it seems like it's growing, but I do declare he's given us power, sister and brother. He gives us power. Even when we get weary, he gives us power. He has more than enough power to go around. He doesn't get tired of giving his power to his people. But we have, a, uh, we have something that we have to do. We have no might in ourselves, but in him we have strength, and he increases that strength. According to 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, the reason most of us fail is because we're trusting in our own abilities, our own talents, our own gifts, as mother would say, our own strength. You wonder why you get tired? Because you're operating in your flesh. You're not allowing the Holy Ghost to empower you. The Holy Ghost will give you power when you don't think you have the power. It's almost like the, the things you hear about. It, it seems like it's supernatural because it is, because it's a spiritual thing. It's not a natural thing. It has nothing to do with your own ability. Think about a lot of times when the, uh, they talk about those mothers, those women who something happens to their children and they may have to lift a car or something like that. When God gives you power, he gives you supernatural strength. No matter what, the, what, what is coming against you, that's why we stay in a posture to say, God, I may be weak, I may be weary, but I'm here for a little bit more power. I'm here for a little bit more of you, God. More of you and less of me. I need you, God, as never before. I need you to deliver me from the hands of the enemy. And he said to me, being Paul, my grace is sufficient for you because the power is perfected in weakness. When we acknowledge to God that we don't have any strength, then we can see, you, you can see the difference. When we acknowledge that we don't know what we're doing and it doesn't matter what my intellect is saying, it's the God in me that's gonna make a difference. When I walk into the boardrooms, when I walk into meetings, when I work with other people, it doesn't have anything to do with my intellect. It has to do with God is doing in my life. I'm gonna be like, Pastor, can I testify? So we went to Dallas on this weekend. I had, uh, we're working on another project, a senior project with a group of people God has so beautifully connected us with in order to do some things. This is what God will do when you submit your will to him. He'll open doors that you don't even look for to be open. He'll make things, the, the, the pathway straight when you don't even expect him to make that that move, I, I was just in, my daughter was just in awe. She said, Mom, it just looked like everything just opened up so smoothly. I said, that's the kind of God we serve. I said, I don't pray for nothing, uh, Maya. I said, I pray. When I pray, I pray sincerely. I seek the face of God because he's the only one who could open a door, and he's the only one who can close a door. And I tell you, as Mother Louise Patterson said when she was alive, she used to say, when God puts you on hold, don't you hang up? Sometimes God is delaying you to keep you from, from some disaster down the road. Now you can jump over that if you want to, but he will delay things for you. Trust me, I know that project that you see on 27th Avenue phase two, it took us five years, but God had a plan in all of it. He will put you in position, saints of God. Don't even if, like I said, I'm not even going to tell you not to grow weary because this flesh will grow weary. Because he, but he said he'll give you power. So what I'm saying to you today, even in your weariness, yes, pastor and I get weary. We, we encourage each other sometimes. But even in our weariness, we never stop praying. We never stop saying, God, I'm going to hold to your unchanging hand. I'm building my hopes on things eternal because you are the only hope. My hope is in you. But back to my testimony. 
this past Tuesday, I had asked um, one of the development partners that we're working with now on a third project. So we have Rehoboth Place 2 going, and God has placed a third project, which is a senior project in our pathway. So we're working on a senior project, right? So God put this thing in so succinctly. I had said to the gentleman on the line, we were on emailing each other back, and we were Zooming. I said, you know, you're in the Tex Dallas, Texas area. He said, yeah. And so I said, well, my husband and I are going to be in Dallas. I'd love to meet you since, you know, with this Zoom stuff, I like to have face-to-face -face conversations. He said, okay, no worries. We get to Dallas. He texts me. He said, Gwen, I'm, um, I'm getting on a flight, but I'll be in Dallas this afternoon. I'll connect, to, connect with you when we get there. We get a text that afternoon and we um, he chose a restaurant for us to go to we met him on Tuesday night and in our conversation it was just like a hand fit in a glove like it was supposed to be talking about how you know we needed you know how God put us together and things like that but the good thing is he said to us I, we found out that uh, Digger Strickland he didn't live in in Dallas he lived in Houston which is like three hours away he got on a plane and flew to Dallas just to meet us. He said, I already heard your reputation precedes you. See, when you walk with God, your reputation will precede you. We get there and he says, yeah, I heard that y'all rock stars in Phoenix. I said, I don't know about that. He said, oh yeah, I done heard about you all. And so my husband said, you really flew in from Houston to meet with us? He said, yeah, I only came for this purpose. I needed to meet you all. He said, because I heard, I'm, I'm not going to say everything he said, because my, my husband said, I wish that were true. <laughs> he said, I heard some really great things about you. He was really, you know, going in. But I thank God for when you walk with him, he'll put you in paths. He'll put you in situations that you have no idea that you're even going to be in. If somebody told me two months ago or six months ago that we would already be working on a third project, I wouldn't even believe that. But we have that opportunity, amen. So we must recognize that in Christ, we live, move, and have our being. If we're not in Christ, we cannot allow him to live, move, or have his being in him. Uh, we can't have our being in him. Even the youth, as the scripture says, shall faint and be weary. Young people, you may get tired of doing right. You may get tired of not wanting to hear your parents. But let me speak to you right now, just as you're a youth right now. Even if you're weary, even if you feel exhausted as young people, Trust me, we met some young people. This, uh, we saw a sister, you all know Sister Celine and Sister Chelsea. We had dinner with them Thursday night, doing very well. As I was so happy to see them. They're doing very well. But even when you get tired, if you listen, you can escape a whole lot of heartache. Yeah. Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't always been this polished. We haven't always been where we're at but somebody had to teach us some sense until we understood where we needed to be, amen? amen? So even when you get exhausted, and I wanna ask everyone, what are you exhausted from? What are you, have you evaluated? What is your weariness? So many times we get weary and we just feel like we're just gonna give up on God. What is your weariness? Are you tired of doing the same thing over and over? Well, when we do the same thing over and over and expect a different result, what is that? That's insanity, right? So we need to understand if we're doing the same thing and going through the same thing and don't seem like we're getting anywhere, then you might want to have a talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. Isn't that what the song says? Y'all know, if I could sing, I really would sing. But I don't, you know, I, I make a joyful noise. So I ain't about to do that right now. <clears throat> but we're talking about the youth, those who are selected by God, who are chosen, young men, young women who are picked out on account of your youthful vigor for an enterprise. You got to understand, God needs you. Young as well as the season, he needs us to do the work that he's calling for us to do in this earth. Right. Now, if you choose not to do it, then he don't need you because he's not going to beg or prod or, or make you do anything. 
But if you want to be that willing vessel, guess what? Gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. Because I'm not going to tell you that the road is going to be easy, but let me say this. It ain't easy on the other side. Them folk don't treat you right whether you saved or not. And some of us don't treat folk right whether we saved or not. If truth be told, we have to work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling. That's what the book says, amen? But they who wait for the Lord shall do what? How many of us need some strength renewed? So that means you may have to wait a little bit longer. He said, wait for the Lord. I'll say, wait before the Lord. If that means you're going to be waiting in prayer. You're going to be waiting and fasting. You're going to be waiting and, and doing something, as my brother said. You're not going to just sit back and wait for God to show up. If you want God to show up, you need to show up yourself. And I'm not talking about you all who are hidden and missing. I'm talking about, and if you are hidden and missing, this message is to you. It's time to get a little bit stronger in the Lord. It's time to say, God, I, okay, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of the way I've been doing things. Because you know it's not working for you, right? It's not going to work for you when you just do what you want to do and you, you're a child of God. Because he said he's chasing those whom he loves. So when he chases you, guess what? I can't, I'm not going to get in the way and get the belt for you. You will get a whooping. I just want you to know that. In case you, some of y'all haven't, haven't had a whooping from God, I think I, I'm, I'm going to just stay back. Pastor, not going to pray for you, but until God, until God lift it, he will do that. I just want you to know. But he said, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Let me tell you a little bit about the wing, that eagle, just a little bit. Rather, they shall put forth fresh feathers at eagles, are said to renovate themselves. So eagles' feathers are said to, they can renovate themselves. I know we don't see a lot of eagles here in Arizona, but there were some on South Mountain, and my girlfriend and I were talking about the eagle, and she was, I showed her a picture of somebody had captured one that was soaring. So did you know, some of you all know a lot more about this than I do, so that's what I'm gonna ask you, did you know, wherever the eagle needs to go higher, he finds a storm because he needs the turbulence, the windstorm, to push him. How many of y'all want to go higher? When you want to go higher, understand turbulence is going to come. The windstorm is going to come. Things are not going to be smooth and, and, and sailing as you see when he gets high up above the clouds. They're not going to be like that until the windstorm pushes you. The wind that pushes him is the wind that's against him. So when, you, when you're thinking about the folks on your job and the people in your family and they don't want you to do this and they don't want you to do that, guess what? Be like the eagle. Let that push you higher. Let it push you higher in the Lord. Let it push you. Don't let it re make you retreat because he said he don't have any pleasure in a drawback spirit. When you draw back, that means you got to go back and start over. It don't mean that he don't love you, but you just have to start over. And if you're tired of starting over, you got to be like the eagle and begin to soar. Get above all of that. Just let folk know, you know what, that's not what my destiny is. If they want to talk about you, let them talk. Let them talk. If they want to say whatever they want to say, let them say what they want to say. As Bishop King used to say, what do they say? Let them say what they say. But all I got to say is the proof is in the pudding. When the power of God is in you and working and you can say, Lord, I need you. He said, here am I. All you have to do is call on him. And he said, I'll answer you. That's the kind of God that I'm talking about. The God that he is the, cre you, I'm going back to that, he's the creator of the universe. He's the God who handles everything that we have, we need him to handle. He's not that kind of God that's going to just, you know, let anything happen to you. He'll swoop you up. He'll, he, his, he'll hide you. He said, he that is, hides himself in a secret place shall abide. He that abides in the secret place shall what hide under the shadow of his wings? 
Thank you. Thank you. So stay there. That's what I'm trying to say. When you stay with God and you dwell in that secret place, he said he's going to hide you. So things that used to get to you, Sister Jeray, they don't have that power over you anymore. We got to get to the place of dwelling with God. When you, when you used to have a prayer life, strong and vigorous, and now you just barely roll over and say, thank you, Lord. Get back to that prayer life. Get back to that time where you seek the Lord with all of your heart, souls, minds, and strength. Get back to that. And if you never had that opportunity, it's time to press into it. And if you really mean God, if the things are coming against you, you don't run to the stuff and, and I'm going to fight my battle. No, I run to the, to the rock who's, who's higher than I. I run to him. And if you just can't make it, call on the saints. You know what? The saints are praying five, seven days a week. Call one of the real saints. I'm not talking about these folks who are going to get with you. Unless, where they at, girl? Let me go. Uh, let me, let me, I, I'll, I'll give you a piece. I'll give them a piece of my mind. I'll lay my Holy Ghost down. No, we're not talking about them kind of folks. We're talking about the people of God who know where their strength comes from. The eagle was thought to, thought to molt and renew his feathers with them and with them his strength in old age. Whether you're aged or whether you're young, don't give up your status. God didn't make us like the buzzards. He could have said the buzzards. He knew the buzzards wasn't going to do nothing but eat dead carcasses and stuff. He didn't call us buzzards. He said the eagle, that eagle has purpose. He can look down from really, really high from what I understand and see something on the ground and, and just be so focused until he goes swoop down and pick it up and then get back up. That's how focused God wants us to be laser focused with, his, with our walk with him. In every attitude, the praying, waiting child of God is strong in the Lord. Psalm 84 and 7, they go from strength to strength. We're not going to go from strength to weakness. We're going to go from strength to strength until each appears before God in Zion. Micah 4 and 5 says, for all nations walk, each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of Yahweh, our God. Yahweh being our strength, Yahweh being our, our mighty battle axe, Yahweh being the one who is. He said, I am that I am. That's who Yahweh is. He is our God forever and ever. Hebrews 12 and 1, the example of Jesus' suffering. Therefore, since we also have such a great, of cl great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, putting us aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with patient endurance the race that is set before us. As I close, we have to understand, people of God, we're in it now. Tell your neighbor, and I'm not that neighbor, talk to your neighbor person, but tell your neighbor you're in it now. So it's time to rise up and be accountable. Stop letting every wind of doctrine toss you to and fro. Allow God to strengthen you. He said we can go from faith to faith, strength to strength, glory to glory. You can never be where God wants you to be and you going back and forward and back and forward and back and forward. Make up your mind. If you haven't made up your mind, you're here for a reason on today. Some of you may be getting started in the Lord. Some of you may have been in this thing long enough and you become weary. But remember, even if you're weary, he said, I'll give you power. I'll give power to the weary. So when you're weary, don't worry about it. But seek the Lord while he may be found. Remember, Yahweh, meaning God is the God that I am. He's not weary. So you don't serve a God who's, who, who's weak like we get weak. He's not a God that gets weak in the faith. He's the one who gives us faith. If he didn't give us our faith, we wouldn't have any anyway. He is the creator of all things. He gives power to the faint and weary because we know we have no power within ourselves. When we wait on or before the Lord, he renews our strength. Let's give God a hand praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for my deliverance. 
Thank you for my peace. Thank you for my hope on today. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing in my life. Oh, God, he's a strength giver on today. He's a deliverer. If you need a little bit more faith, if you need a little bit more power, let's just stand to our feet because he is God. And beside him, there is no other. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. My hope is in the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. He made the heavens and he made the earth. He said, I shall, he, he won't suffer his foot to be moved. Neither does he slumber, nor does he sleep. You are serving a God who is a God of all flesh. But you know what? He be, we belong to him. If you haven't made up in your mind on today, or if you decided today is my day, I want the more of the Lord. I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. I want to be, I've been weary, First Lady. The power of the Lord, I need him as never before. I want him to, I want you to just, whether you stand where you are or begin to cry out to God where you are, I'll pray with you. The, the, I went into a class the other day by mistake. I was looking for one class and I went into the class of evangelism and the bishop said to me, I said, I'm looking for a blah, blah, blah class. He said, uh, well, this ain't it, but don't you want to be an evangelist? I said, I am an evangelist. He said, well, don't you want to be a better evangelist? Well, I'm here today to be that better evangelist if I need to be. Looking for God to take me higher in him. I don't know about you all, how many of you all are tired of just going through the motions? He's, you've got to do more than just go through the motions. He's got so much more for us. If, listen, if Peter was able to heal people just with his shadow, what is it gonna take for you to walk in your gift and your call and your purpose? We all have a gift, we all have a calling. We may not have the same calling and the same gift, but we have a purpose. So it's time for us to rise up and walk in that purpose. God called this church out to be, we came out of a remnant, amen? A remnant of some powerful people. So if we're the remnant, then guess what? We got to rise up. We can't just go through the motions. Our battles may be a little bit harder than some other battles, right? But guess what? He said he gives us gives power to the weary. Some of us been in here 10, 15, 20, 30 years. What should we be doing? How should we be calling on the Lord? How should we be making a difference for our family? How do we intercede that they might understand the God of the Bible that we described on today? That he is God and beside him there is no other. How do we get, to under, get them to understand the power of God that works in us, both the will and to do for his good pleasure, not for our good pleasure? How do we do that? First lady, get me to that point. Well, we have a pastor who teaches and preaches and reaches as far as he can reach, but we've got to, a, 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 a work to do, amen? amen? As we pray, I'm not gonna call an altar call because I believe that you already know who you are. You know what you need to do. You call on the Lord and see if you can, you can reach where he wants you to be. Because he said, if you call on me, I'll answer. So it's up to us to call on him. Father God, these are your people. They are the sheep. We are the sheep of your pasture. There's none like you in all the earth. Lord, we cry out before you this morning. To the God who is not weary, neither do you faint. God, we are waiting before you, God, for whatever instructions you have for us, for whatever purpose you have deemed for us to do. God, we're waiting before you. Oh, God, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. The blood covers us on today. The blood makes us whole. The blood delivers us. The blood makes us free. Lord, bless these, your people. Lord, to have ears to hear what your spirit is saying to the church. Lord, don't let us leave out of here the same way we came. Give us to take this word and hide, us in our, hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Lord, give us to be stirred in our hearts and in our minds. Give us to be stirred in our souls, God. The young as well as the old, oh God. Stir us the more, God. Let your Holy Ghost prevail in us, God. 
Let your glory be revealed. Lord, hide us under the shadow of the Almighty. Don't let us, oh God, be weary in well-doing. But Lord, your word says we shall reap if we faint not. But your word just told us on today, even, in, if, even if we're weary, God, you said you give us power, oh God, to overcome the weariness, the tiredness, the exhaustedness. Lord, give us to stop operating in our flesh, but to operate in you. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.